Chris Bukowski and Chris White for Emerging Civil War here at the Stones River Battlefield. I love this spot because you really get a sense of the unfolding action here. Yeah, unfolding is probably the, or folding might be the more appropriate oh. term out here on the battlefield because uh, what's happening here on the morning of December 31st, 1862, the Confederates are attacking the Union right flank and it's going to fold back in like a pocket knife. Uh, so if you ever try to fold up a pocket knife, that's what's going to happen. Uh, off to my left, uh, not too far from here will be the, the famed slaughter pen. Yes, there's a slaughter pen here. It's a very impressive place to go to. Um, a, a very impressive rock formation. Then behind me, because we're doing this in reverse is uh, Hell's Half Acre. Um, so we're going to start to see a lot of the fighting as Philip Sheridan's division is going to try to be the hinge, as it were, for William Stark Rosecrans, uh, Army of the Cumberland, newly named Army of the Cumberland, as they are trying to hold on here for dear life. Um, and by 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the afternoon, nearly four divisions of the eight divisions of the Army of the Cumberland have been essentially uh, uh, knocked, off the, knocked off the world uh, or off the battle map. Look, we're being photobombed by Gary Edelman. Look at that. Crazy, crazy. And there's Jim Lewis, uh, <laughs> Chief Ranger here at Stones River. And uh, Jim's just been fantastic today. Uh, G Jim's awesome. That Gary guy, I, all he keeps talking about is Gettysburg. I don't know. I know, <laughs> I know. I mean, like, we say slaughter pen, and of course, he brings in Gettysburg. Yeah. Gettysburg. <laughs> <laughs> and then what are we looking at over in that direction? Um, looks like we're looking towards the National Cemetery, if I'm correct. You are. Yeah. There we are. Uh, National Cemetery, uh, Stones River is off in that direction, uh, which gives uh, what the battle one of its names, Murfreesboro or Stones River. Um, and we'll also be looking uh, towards one of the last Union lines, if I'm correct, uh, with Mendenhall's 57 or so guns. So, fantastic spot on the battlefield. You really get a good panorama of a lot of the different actions and the many different stories that take place here. One of my favorites is actually a little wayside that's down this little path behind us there that talks about <laughs> where those where those folks are walking that talks about um the 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 incident on the eve of battle and jim can i put you on the spot and have you come you, you told the story earlier about mm -hmm. uh battle of the bands that takes place yeah. here mm -hmm. so when we were yeah, oh yeah that was a events, fantastic yeah. battle of the well yeah it's one of our most unique and poignant stories of the battle um, during the evening of the 30th as the two armies are facing one another and preparing to get ready for, um, you know, you don't get that many men together and don't figure there's not going to be a fight, so they know it's coming. Um, the bands of both sides begin playing music to try to raise the men's spirits. Um, it's kind of the tradition. And you start off with kind of a cacophony as Union bands try to outdo Confederate bands, and then you try to be louder than even the guy next to you, and everybody's playing a different song. And then somewhere just before the call for lights out was going to come, uh, a band, and nobody knows which side, which one, starts playing Home Sweet Home. And one after the other after the other, every band picks up the tune. It's said that even some of the men began singing the refrain, and then it all kind of died down and every one of those 81,000 soldiers is now left with that song in their head contemplating whether or not they may survive to see home sweet home again and i think in a battle where by percentage of casualties that's about to happen it's about as bad as it gets it's as bad as it gets what a poignant moment on the eve yeah. of battle so. yeah it's it's it, you know, like i said it's one of those things you kind of those stories you hold on to because it, it's it, it's it's human yeah everybody it doesn't matter whether you are into the civil war or not that kind of story everybody can understand yeah fantastic yeah. let me bring uh, chris white back in here as we, we get ready to wrap up uh chris let me just ask you real quick uh, um your impressions of Stone River so far today? Oh, I love Stone River. This is my third time, fourth time that I've been here. Um, I think it's a fantastic battlefield. I think it's overlooked uh, in the grander scheme of things because you have Braxton Bragg and William Stark Rosecrans. We're not talking about, for some people, they're Civil War A-listers, um, but they are really the real deal. This is a real deal battle. A lot of things will happen, and this is going to set up uh, for those Chattanooga fans, Tullahoma fans that are out there, the three people who know Tullahoma, um, this is going to set up that <laughs> campaign and then get us down to Chattanooga, Chickamauga, Atlanta. I mean, it's going it, to, this is a, a real deal battle. Plus, you know, in terms of percentage of casualties, this is it. This is the highest uh, number of percentage of casualties with these two armies. And the, the casualty figures are very, very even um, whenever you come out of here. And it's uh, yet again, Braxton Bragg, you know, bringing the jaws of defeat 
from the grip of victory. So. <laughs> and of course, uh, hey, I'm the... just going to say right now, it might have had something to do with the Union Army. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't George Pickett say that after where? He did. Gettysburg. Gettysburg. <laughs> Look at that, Gary bringing that in. I'm Chris Wachowski. This is Chris White. Thanks for Gary Adolin and uh, Jim Lewis for having a great time here at Stones River National Battlefield.